Hi everyone, I'm Lyndon Mittenall, Senior Director in the Regeneron Genetics Center at Regeneron, where I work to establish human genetics research collaborations and initiatives to solve health challenges. At Regeneron, we harness the power of science to bring life-transforming medicines to people with serious disease. We are a leading science and technology company dedicated to translating science into medicine, which has led to many FDA approved treatments and product candidates in development, almost all of which were homegrown in Regeneron's laboratories. We are also very dedicated to fostering the next generation of scientific innovators who can solve humanity's greatest challenges. Our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion guides our STEM education efforts. Regeneron collaborates with leading organizations like Base 11 to drive equitable pathways to careers in STEM in three important ways. One, expose young minds to the power of science. Two, equip students and teachers with vital STEM skills. And three, elevate the best and brightest minds through research experiences, STEM competitions, and science challenges, like this Regeneron Science Talent Search, the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair, and our DNA Diversity Challenge, which I'll talk more about in a moment. First, I'd like to share a little bit about my own journey. When I was in college, I had the opportunity to participate in programs like those that Regeneron helps to fund. And it was these STEM programs that introduced me to biomedical research, which then empowered me to pursue a career in science. In addition, these programs gave me the opportunity to meet great mentors who guided me in making key decisions in my career. Building those professional relationships with great mentors can change your life. Regeneron's STEM commitment is one of the many reasons why I'm so proud to work at this company. And now more about the DNA Diversity Challenge. Through this challenge, we wanted to engage with this diverse community of solution seekers interested in changing the world. Last spring, we posed a critical challenge to you to help increase the inclusion of Black Americans in genomics research. The lack of diversity in genomics research creates limitations to the understanding of the meaningful differences that may cause or protect against disease. Increasing participation of Black Americans in genomics research will directly contribute to medical advances and therapeutics that can benefit everyone. Many of you submitted your innovative ideas for addressing the known barriers of participation. Thank you to everyone who took the time to be a part of this important challenge. I want to now send a warm congratulations to our winners. The ideas and proposals awarded will help shape the ways Regeneron and collaborators from across the healthcare, academic, and nonprofit sectors combine their unique strengths to address the barriers of participation. I am honored to introduce three of the DNA Diversity Challenge winners who are joining us here today. Janae McLeod, Ariana O'Reilly, and Gary Kawakami. Janae, Ariana, and Gary will be sharing more about their experiences and their winning ideas to improve Black American representation in genomics research. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Janae McLeod. I am a senior biology major at Benedict College. Um, and I want to introduce you to you guys my submission for the DNA Diversity Challenge. Um, I was given the opportunity um, actually from my advisor. He introduced it to me and a couple other students as well um, over the summer. Um, so I decided to um, jump onto that project. Uh, what made me um, kind of start um, the idea was just overall um, my kind of knowledge on genomics and the genome, the human genome project. Um, actually back in uh, 2019, I was actually given the opportunity to write a report of um, 
the Human Genome Project and some of the um, things that people agree with and don't agree with um, in regards to that project. Um, so just overall seeing that that was kind of um, the topic of this uh, challenge is what kind of drove my interest and wanted to submit um, into it. Um, so uh, well, some of the challenges that I had going into um, the project was just overall deciding what I wanted to include and what I didn't want to include, but actually um, what exactly I wanted my topic to um, be around. Um, and considering that I do go to Benedict College, which is a historically black um, college university, um, I noticed that um, when I went around and started asking some of my friends and fellow peers if they knew about genomics and things of that nature, they said, no, what is that? Um, but specifically when I would ask my friends in biology and chemistry and things of that nature, um, they were like, yeah, you know, I'm familiar with it. I know what it is. Um, or someone said, I'm familiar with it, but I don't know too much about it. Um, so that kind of stuck out to me. Um, it was kind of giving me a spark on where I should go in regards to the project um, in my research. Um, so from there, I decided to um, submit into the uh, collaborative challenge portion of this challenge, which was to um, basically find a way we could collaborate with an organization or institution in regards to helping um, increase the participation of African-Americans in genomics research. Um, so by doing that, I kind of looked into Benedict College, which is where I um, am now getting my undergraduate degree, um, and kind of just looked through um, course studies to kind of see which courses were familiar amongst um, STEM majors and non-STEM majors. Um, and with that being said, I kind of was able to see that we were all uh, um, told that we need to take health courses. Um, health was a course that everyone needed to take, no matter what discipline um, that you were in. So I was thinking, okay, so from there, maybe we could um, insert genomics uh, research kind of into health. Um, a lot of people kind of look into their background, um, and I kind of make connections to ancestry as well. Um, from there to see maybe if we could help increase the participation that way. Um, then, um, from there to kind of branch away from Benedict, I looked into other HBCUs. I looked into um, South Carolina State University um, in Orangeburg, South Carolina, as well as Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and I also saw that with them, all of their disciplines are required to take a health course. Um, so that was kind of where I took my research, kind of branched um, with it from there in order to help generate my proposal for the challenge. Um, so... Honestly, from here, uh, moving past the challenge, once I submitted it, I actually reached out to a couple of friends um, in regards to a survey. Um, and on the survey, I basically asked some questions like, um, when you go to the doctor, does your physician ask you this um, in regards to your family history, health history? Um, are you familiar with genomics research? Would you be interested in genomics research? Um, and a lot of people said that they would be interested in it, but a lot of those same people did also say that um, they were never asked about um, the importance of genomics research and things like that. Um, so I kind of um, wanted my project or my proposal to kind of circulate around the needs of basically giving us the access, giving African-Americans the access to the information to become more familiar with genomics research. Um, and from there, that kind of helps with um, awareness, helps build the trust and overall um, increased participation. Of course, you wouldn't want to join anything if it wasn't really interesting to you. Um, so that's kind of where I wanted to go from there um, to kind of make it more interesting and reach out to a broad um, amount of people. Um, in regards to STEM, I've actually been interested in um, STEM for a very long time. So doing this project kind of helped me see where, like how far I've been from when I first started STEM to where I am now. Um, and STEM was actually first introduced to me actually in elementary school. Um, we had a science course and that's where they told us all about STEM. Um, and from there, that's when it kind of branched off from STEM to STEAM and things of that nature. Um, and to where I am now as a biology major at Benedict College. So STEM really plays a, a strong role in my life. Um, and I was actually um, honored to be given the opportunity to submit um, into the Base 11 Challenge. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to Regeneron Pharmaceuticals because um, um, without you guys, this project um, and this project, I wouldn't have been able to um, learn more about a new interest that I have, which is just genomics research um, in general. Um, so again, thank you guys so much for the opportunity. Um, and I hope to um, reach out to any other individuals that might be interested in genomics research as well. Uh, aloha. Uh, my name is Gary Kawakami. I'm an architect by profession. Being an architect, um, as I might have mentioned before, my, my, my background, my education, and my interests are very wide. Um, I mean, we, we, we have to be a little bit of an artist, which I am. You have to be a little bit of an engineer, which I'm not, and not necessarily interested in being. Um, you have to be able to compose your thoughts because some of our work has to do with presenting ideas or getting permits, et cetera. 
Um, but I have a wide range of interests. Um, I, as I said, I've always been interested in science and technology as well. So my background is more of a generalist. But one thing I found when I discovered the whole world of innovation challenges, because I've always been kind of an inventive type of person. Um, I maintain like a record of all of my ideas, good or bad. I don't care if they're bad. I still usually record them. I've got a book of about 300 plus pages of inventions or innovations, which I guess I'm a procrastinator and maybe not a follow through kind of guy. So I've never, I, I, I was in contact with a patent attorney with some toys and stuff like that, but I've never pursued it because I, I was pretty busy doing my other work anyhow. Um, but, um, you know, they, they, they covered a range from toys, sports, housewares, exotic experimental type of things, um, retail ideas, uh, goofy ideas, uh, novelty ideas. All kinds of things. Anyhow, um, I've always had this interest in invention and innovation. So when I came across the innovation challenges like on Hero X, um, I, I would just look through them. And if I saw something that I usually it's if I have an idea, like I see the challenge and I sometimes I just say, OK, I think I know what might work. Other times I think I might have an idea, but I got to think about it a little longer. But, you know, if the challenge sounds like it's something that I could address or handle, then I will try to respond to it. Um, and in some cases, you know, it's in fact, in many cases, it is going to involve something that I'm not necessarily expert or really proficient in. But why I think I kind of address the idea that with STEM education, it doesn't mean you're a scientist or a mathematician or a physicist or a doctor. It just means that you have an appreciation for the reality that science, technology, engineering, and math present because those things work. We would not be speaking like this if people had not discovered all of the and just developed all the technology that makes it work. So to me, that's a validation that some things are very real and they work. Um, we're not able to do this if people do not have, uh, I think, the interest and the talent and the skill to apply to creating the Internet. S um, screens, um, apps, all of those things are related to people's affinity to find solutions. And with the challenges that I came across, I would have to kind of pick and choose what makes sense for me, what I think I can address. So sometimes, even if I don't know this particular field, I'm willing to at least use my general knowledge of what might work, because a lot of times solutions um, are probably uh, possible from people who are lay, lay people. Um, I think sometimes some of the challenges from what I've noticed, it may be that those who are in that profession or in that field of technology, because they're working in it, um, they may come to an impasse or something that they cannot quite figure out. And I think the whole idea of innovation challenges like Hero X is that, okay, maybe there's someone who's outside of that field. Um, you know, in a way, naivety can work for you because you don't know enough to be, I think, limited by assumptions or predispositions that you've accumulated over time, you don't know. So you just say, well, what about this? And maybe sometimes it'll work. Uh, and it may be just a different perspective is valuable in helping to develop you know, a solution that may not be um, possible when you're in, in that business itself. So I think there's a benefit to that. I mean, it kind of relates, I think, to my generalized background as well as I think just having, I think, a, I think a natural curiosity about a lot of things. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I just am, I'm kind of a pest to some of the, my friends, you know, because I'm always talking about a variety of things and making jokes about things and all that. And basically it's, you know, like what, 
where did that come from? <laughs> because one thing I do like to do um, is I like to, to me, and a lot of what I consider innovation is, and I think that's one of the fundamental things about innovation is connecting things that were formerly not thought to be connectable. Um, invention is something completely new. Innovation is something that maybe is not completely new, but it's taking things that have been developed before and using them in new ways that had not been anticipated. And there's, you know, there's plenty of room for both. But I think that's kind of why I got into the innovation kind of challenges, because I just find them uh, kind of interesting, fascinating, and something that in some cases I can take a take a crack at. And, uh, you know, I think... Uh, it's it's um, even though I I've probably entered so many and I've only um, been successful in some of them, I return because I'm sort of a stubborn guy. Um, I think stubbornness is really good. Uh, nothing wrong with that in almost anything except when you're wrong. <laughs> but um, I kind of like the challenge of new things all the time too. Um, it's it's interesting because as I expo explained to Allison, I mean, I still think that you know, in some cases, a solution I came up with is the right one, and yeah, you know, it may maybe someday it'll. I just hope that they keep all of the um, submittals, so that when they someday look back at it and say, you know, that didn't work, the one that we gave the win to, so we better look at the others because I still think I got one in there that is uh, very very important and will save lives. Hi, my name is Ariana O'Reilly. I'm a tour director from Los Angeles, California, and I won the Regeneron Challenge. Um, so my experience, I guess I I should tell you about how I found Regeneron, um, so, or Hero X in general. I was browsing Facebook, which I had just gotten back on the profile, um, or on my profile for years of never being on Facebook, and I saw this challenge, um, and I was like, well, what is this? I love the, the concept of basically, um, companies asking people for help. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I just think it's a cool concept to, to put out a challenge and then be able to get, um, outside knowledge into your organization about things. So I've always found that really cool. I knew people did these competitions and there were companies that were looking for help in general areas, usually math and science, like way smarter people than me. Um, and I, I've always like thought that was really cool, but I couldn't participate because I'm not that smart in math and science. Um, so when I found this, I was like, okay, I think I, I could do something. So I was basically sitting in um, my parents' living room after getting off of work, because I work as a tour guide, so I was back in California, and I I was just thinking, like, what could this be? And I was thinking of the Civil Rights Trail, which is basically um, what I do daily. So I take people on the Civil Rights Trail, I tell them about history and um, about African Americans in history and people who ch help change history in general. Um, and kind of the idea popped into my head to do genome genomics testing at these sites because there are a lot of African American people. There are a lot of people in general, which makes me really proud. People are really interested in their history, um, but a lot of African Americans are there as well. So I was like, I think it's kind of perfect. You can combine education with genomics because people once you get through these sites some people come out angry some people come out like really upset but a lot of people in general come out um, of these sites very proud of of like how far african americans have come so a lot of these sites are um museums let's museums are the main parts of them but they're not just like a regular, you know, you go into a museum and you learn about the dinosaurs. You're learning about history, for one. 
um, a, and not that recent or not that <laughs> that long ago, this history just happened. And then on top of that, you're learning about all of these struggles that people went through and that your ancestors went through. And by the time you come out of it, or when I come out of these museums, usually I'm proud. Like we did a lot um, from all the repression and slavery and, and all of that bad history. And we are turning into doctors and lawyers and scientists. Like I, I really like um, what Base 11 is doing with young people in general. Like they are taking a STEM and STEAM and allowing people who might not get those opportunities to progress. And like, in general, we can do great things. So I really enjoyed that. So I think that's what I channeled into, into this project was like, we've come so far. So it was allowing people access to the sites because they're placed so close to, um, historical sites on the civil rights trail and then also allowing people to um work with base 11 i think that was that was one of the main components of my um idea was allowing um base 11 cohorts or um people that were working with base 11 young people like yourself um to run these sites so they would be educating people on history and they would be getting people in and telling them why it's so important that they um, donate or give back to the community through donating their samples to Regeneron. Um, because, and, and a, some of my project, I focused on Henrietta Lacks. So basically Henrietta Lacks was this black woman who um, died of cancer but before she passed away from cancer, she um, her cells were taken and those cells were basically able to they they revolutionized um, science in a certain way because her cells basically regenerated very quickly. So scientists were able to do tests on that. Um, and basically what happened to her was completely unethical. But from what happened to her, she saved basically millions of lives. So really the concept and the core of the idea is going back to ethically um, asking people to donate because it's so important um, to get DNA from a diverse group of people. And I, I really appreciate Regeneron for um, basically setting this up to allow African Americans and help African Americans to to donate because from that we're able to create drugs and solutions for us because typically that doesn't happen. So I I really appreciate it. Um I'm glad that I was able to participate in this and and help with the solution. Uh and I hope you all enjoy the conference. <music>